What's up guys, Sick Crazy here. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys High School Stories episode 34 and uh, today is just going to be talking about my second Warp and Fire. Um, and I know this may not be the most entertaining topic for all of you guys, but um, this is just something that some people may be interested in, so uh, I'm doing it for those people that may be interested in it. So real quick about the gameplay, it's Solar Hardpoint. My team ends up losing, but I dropped a 50 bomb, so I decided to upload it anyway. Uh, and there's a couple of really good streaks in here. Um, so yeah, and I cut off uh, a lot. I cut out a lot of it because this was like a, a, an 11 minute gameplay, so I just cut it up a lot. So um, anyway, uh, so we got the second working fire. So um, now this fire was a two alarm fire. Um, I have it written down on my phone, which I'm gonna get right now. All the companies that were there, and I know you guys won't know the name, the like. Who these companies are i'm just gonna this is just to give you an idea of who who was there how many trucks were there so where is it uh crap i deleted it oh well um it was company 75 76 77 01 05 09 01 my company 07 08 20 26 and 24 um, so the average alarm is three companies, and then we, sp we they special called our company in for an air bank uh, about an hour into it. So, um, what happened with the fire was uh, the guy. This is what we think happened, uh, at least what I think happened. I'm not sure if what is the official story. This is just my what I think happened. Um, so the official account says that he walked in to his house and said something along the lines of it's toasty in here to his to the person who dropped him off um, or said he had to fix the heat or something along those lines <coughs> excuse me and uh, after that he was like uh, he went downstairs to try to fix his heater and he must have hit something like too hard or done something wrong and it blew up um, so that meant that um, the, there was just a big explosion, and then I think the neighbor called it in. And it was a cross from. Now the way we all in the fire service know it's going to be a working fire, if something comes in as a cross from. It's usually not good. Um, so it came in as a cross from, and my company. I was already at my station for an accident. Um, so then 75, 76, 77, 05, and 09 got dispatched for this. Uh, building fire, which is the usual dispatch. If oh, and 19 was there too. I forgot about that. That was they were the rapid intervention team, which means if a firefighter goes down, they're not. Uh, they go in. But anyway, uh, so they were. We were already on an accident, so we, and we weren't on the initial call anyway. But um, and anyway, so they they. Got there. Uh, 09 was first on location, even though it was in 76's local, I believe. Um, 09 was first on location and confirmed the report of a working. F or the police actually got on location and confirmed the working fire report. Um, and we actually walked outside as soon as we heard the police confirm the working fire, and we could see the smoke from the house. So uh, it was pretty bad. So um, anyway, uh, o Engine 09 got on location, and they said that uh, they had heavy fire showing from the, the rear uh, and that they were going to go in service. So, um, once they went in service, we knew uh, this is going to be a long night. Um, about five minutes in, they uh, called fire board and they said, Engine 09 to, er, 099 to fire board, uh, we are, could you hit the evac tones? There's heavy hoarding conditions and uh, the structure is not safe. So, um, they, they, that means that everybody had to get out of the building, and that's actually a really eerie sound that you hear, like a beep, 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 beep. It's, it's hard to describe what it sounds like, but, uh, anyway, so once those evac tunes were hit, that meant no one was allowed in the building, on the roof, or, um, so, we're in the basement, and, uh, so, that meant that it was what we call a surround and drown, um, which means we only put water on the fire from the outside and then we go in once the fire's out uh, to make sure there's no going to be no fire. So we were actually there uh, at this point was when, at, right after they called in the 
uh, evac tones. My truck got our truck got back from the accident, and four of us decided we would stick around to make sure they didn't need us at the working fire. So of course, as soon as they needed an air bank, we were hopping on the truck, and um, we got called in, and we were there for about three hours, uh, filled air bottles, but um, it was really kind of a nerve-wracking experience because it was only my second job and it was my first one in like excuse me it was my first one in like a year and a half um so i mean the guy ended up if you guys are wondering the, own, the homeowner ended up not making it out he uh is deceased um and i was a little bit shaken up about it it was my first fatal fire but i knew there was nothing i could have done about it personally and i knew there was nothing that they could have done about it at the call so i wasn't upset as uh, much, but that's my story. My second work of fire. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Be announcing as well. As always, guys, it's been sick, crazy. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video.